everyone, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you're all having a great day. And I figured there's nothing better than being thankful for science. And this is an experiment that I wanna do with you. And this is actually an experiment I wanted to do yesterday with my kids on my online science program, but we ran out of time because we were so busy doing this genetics traits bingo game, learning about genetics. And so I didn't have time then, so I figured I would make time for science right now with all of you because you don't have to be a kid to like science, right? All right, so this is something that I actually posted not that long ago. It's this beautiful, and I know some of you are familiar with it, but if you're not, I want to make you familiar with it. This is this um, butterfly pea flowers. And butterfly pea flowers make this beautiful blue tea. So it's pretty unusual to have blue in nature. Of course, we have blueberries and blue potatoes, purple potatoes that are that bluish color. I mean, it's kind of unusual. Um, and the color can change depending on its environment. And so a really fun thing to do with this blue tea is to add lemon juice to it. And by the way, all the photographers, videographers out there are like, this is terrible, she's backlit. I'm backlit on purpose because I want to be able to see these colors really well. So, all right, so we've got, um, I made some of this uh, butterfly flower or butterfly pea flower, I guess it's called, tea this morning. And I set some aside to be able to do this experiment. So what you can do is you can add a little bit of citrus. So anything that's acidic, you can add to it. And it's pretty beautiful because you can make something that is that was blue. And oh, where's my stir stick? I know I have one handy here. Okay. Um, so you put in, I put in lemon juice and you can see that it turned violet. So yay, something going from blue to purple. That's always pretty, right? In fact, it looks almost pinkish, huh? Okay, so the reason why this happened, we added acid and so those, which is essentially we're adding hydrogen ions and so we have this acid-base reaction happening where when we acidify those dye molecules that's making it, that was making it blue, um, it reacts with it and it changes the structure enough that it absorbs light differently and gives you a different color. Okay, so this purple color then, this is indicative of this being an acidic solution. So we could, add a, we could have added vinegar to it, um, or a lime juice or anything that's acidic and it would turn it this purple color. Okay, so that's what got me thinking. And I was thinking about ocean acidification. All right, so that is something that is a result of there being more carbon dioxide in the air and the carbon dioxide then dissolves into the ocean and it causes it to acidify because carbon dioxide reacts with water to make carbonic acid. And so I thought, I wonder if I were to take my soda stream, okay, so I love carbonated beverages, I love sparkling water. And so I finally broke down and I got myself a soda stream and so this carbonates your water for you. And I, um, you know, I was just buying too much of it. So I figured even though it's kind of an investment, it's definitely going to pay off. So I thought, well, what if I made my little ocean acidification experiment here at home? So I'm going to set these two aside. The, this is the one, this purple one is the one that I added lemon juice to. This is just the blue pea flower that's still blue. So I'll leave that there. And, um, here I have a different, this was all made in the same batch, but I have it separate because I'm going to put it in my soda stream bottle. And so my idea here was I thought, well, my soda stream, this is essentially forcing carbon dioxide out just from the air. And I'm not even going to have it submerged. I'm just going to have it blowing that carbon dioxide over the top of this and it'll force some down in there. And I'm going to see, is that enough carbon dioxide to acidify this? 
And, you know, there are chemicals you can use from a chem lab to do this, but this is food. Like, this is my drink. I'm not gonna put chemicals in here from a lab, but I'm gonna use my butterfly pea flower as my indicator as to whether it is a normal, uh, a pH that we would expect from normal water versus if we acidify it like we did with the lemon juice here, is it gonna do the same thing with carbon dioxide from my soda stream? So I had never done this before, um, before this morning, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna carbonate it on the lowest setting, okay? So I'm not gonna blast it at the highest setting, but instead choosing the lowest. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so it's just, there's the tip of the, the CO2 and there's the level of the water. So it just blasted it a few times. All right, now we're gonna see. I haven't tried it on that setting before, so we're gonna see what happened. So the question is, is this a different color from the blue that it started with? This is what I poured in there. And is it different? Okay, it kind of depends on what's, what's the backdrop here. Okay. Try to hold it up for you so you can see. Did it change color? And from, I don't know how good my, my phone camera is with that, but it is now. Definitely changed color. I'm not gonna say it's a dark purple, but it does have that, oh, that lighting looks different. But from what I can see, and I'm not sure how well you can see it as well, but it has turned purple. So that carbon dioxide from a soda stream was enough to acidify that and is a great example of the ocean acidification that happens or acidification of any waters, really any natural waters, by there being more carbon dioxide in the air. So this is a really cool experiment that you can try even without having that soda stream. I just wanted to try that out, um, but you can definitely, if you get these beautiful, the butterfly pea flowers, what it's called, and get make this beautiful blue tea, and then you can add some kind of lemon juice or something like that, and it also tastes yummy. And last time I posted about this, some of you were talking about putting other things, mixing other things in it like gin. I haven't tried that yet, but all sorts of fun things that you can do with this um, beautiful tea that is also a great example of chemistry and of acid-base chemistry specifically, and uh, just really cool stuff like that. So I am having a lot of fun. I am also having a lot of fun with my online science program. The kids are so excited that they get to meet up with the same kids every week and we do fun experiments together and that is still ongoing. And I would say the, the connections that we've made and just the, the fun that we've had doing, I think it's the um, doing it together in real time. It's not just watching a video and the chance for, for me and all those kids that join in to be able to interact and talk and like go, whoa, together, it makes such a huge difference. So I have been enjoying that a lot and the kids have been too. So, um, and that, by the way, um, you can join that at any time. So if you know of anyone whose kids like science or might they might need more interaction to be able to get more excited about science, whatever the case may be, um, and you wanna check it out, I will, um, I'll put a link below this video so you can see what's up with that. And we always have monthly themes and stuff. I'm having such a blast doing it, it's really cool. All right, well, I hope you're all having a fantastic Thanksgiving and don't forget to, Make time for science. Thank you. See y'all later.